In this video I will show you how to test in Lavan a bifactor model. That is a confirmatory factor analysis, CFA, where we have one general factor and several group factors. This will be our model. We have nine cognitive tests and in this bifactor CFA we assume the, we have one general factor, called G in this case, and three different group factors. And the theory is that each subtest is influenced by the general factor and by one of the group factors. And we will use Lavan to run this by factor analysis in R. Here are the subtests. Three subtests about visual abilities, three subtests about textual abilities, and three subtests about speed. Speeded addition, speeded counting, speeded discrimination. This video is not focused about the theory about bifactor models. For that I've given you some references in the description of this video. This video is about how to implement such a model in Lavan, how to test it, how to deal with problems, and we will see we will have problems with model convergence, and we will see how to overcome them. Let's start with loading Lavan. The complete R code is available on the companion webpage, so there you can just copy paste. The link is in the description. The data frame we are using, Holzinger Swineford, is built in in Lavan, so you can run the same model with the same da data yourself. Here we see our data. Relevant for us are the nine variables x1 to x9, the nine subtests about cognitive ability. If you want to have additional information about this data frame, you can get it with this command, but I've already shown you the meaning of the nine variables. So this is our bifactor model. We have four factors the general factor and the three group factors. And for each of those four factors we have to specify which variables are part of the measurement model for this factor. So visual is measured with x1 to x3, textual with x4 to x6 and so on, and the general factor is measured by all the subtests x1 to x9. There's a second thing we have to specify, restrictions. If you look at this figure you won't see any covariances between those four factors. And that is intentional. The basic bifactor CFA is based on the assumption that all those factors are uncorrelated. As a default, Lavan would estimate covariances between those factors, so we have to put in restrictions that forbid any covariance between those factors. And those restrictions are here. The model estimation is as usual with the CFA. You use the CFA function with this model object and the data frame, and then use the summary function to look at the results. That's as you know it from ordinary CFA. Instead of manually putting in those restrictions, there is a second possibility with equal results. Here in the model specification we only define the measurement models for the four factors, but in the estimation we use an additional parameter, orthogonal equals true. That has the consequence that all covariances between factors are set to zero, so we get essentially the same results. So from now on we will use the shorthand method to constrain the covariances between the factors to zero. Let's run the model. Here we have a problem. Warning, the optimizer warns that a solution has not been found. And down here, Levan did not end normally after 1067 iterations. So there was some problem with convergence here. For that reason we can't really use the results, but nevertheless we should look at the results because maybe they give us some hint where exactly the problem is. Here we see no standard error for any loading, but with the standardized results we get them for textual speed and the general factor, but not for the factor visual. And if we look down here at the variances, the variance for the first subtest x1 is crazily high. So it's quite likely that our problem is somewhere with the first group factor. The first possible solution we use a different factor identification method. As a default, Lavan fixes the first loading for each factor to 1 in order to identify our latent variables. But there is an alternative. Instead, we could fix the variances of the factors to 1 and thereby freely estimating even the first loading for each factor. We can do this with this parameter here. Standardized latent variable equals true. The rest stays the same. It has an impact because now we get a different message. Now we get a message variances are negative. Levan ended normally 
but we get results, that is negative variance, that are not possible, so-called Hayward cases. And looking at the variances, we see a negative variance for x1. That's not allowed, of course. Let's look at the loadings too. And here we have a negative loading for x1 on the visual factor. But since for all those subtests, a higher value is associated with a higher cognitive ability on this subtest, that doesn't really make sense. So it looks a little bit like x1 is the primary problem in our dataset. The estimation in Levin is an iterative process, so we have some starting values, and then step by step the algorithm tries to find a better solution. It could be a problem with the starting values. Levin assigns some starting values as a default, but maybe those starting values lead only to a local optimum. So we could try to use different starting values and see whether that changes the results. We can assign starting values with this parameter and here we give the loading for x1 on the factor visual the starting value of 1. The rest stays the same. Still negative variances for x1 and still a negative loading. So the starting value didn't help. Next possible solution would be making sure that all loadings are in this expected direction. So we expect for all loadings positive values. We could put in restrictions restricting all loadings to positive, but that doesn't seem necessary because with the ex exception of x1, all the other are positive. So what I'm doing here is I put in a restriction restricting the loading for x1 to only positive values. I do that by assigning a label to x1 and down here putting in restriction, restricting this label parameter to values above 1. Still warning messages, still negative variances. In this case a negative variance for x3, but that's not allowed either. And looking here at the loading, the loading for visual is 0. Our restriction was positive, that is above 0, so it's probably 0 0.00001 or something like that. So even with a restriction, we can't really force this loading to be estimated with a positive value. Where does this leave us now? The most likely reason for that is that in our data we don't really have a subfactor visual. So we will change our model to this. A subfactor textual, a subfactor speed, but the tests x1, x2 and x3 only load on the general factor. Here I have deleted the subfactor visual. The rest stays the same. And great, no warning messages anymore. And the van ended normally, so it looks like we have a solution. But first we have to look at the fit indices, whether we have a model fit that is acceptable to us. Here the model test, it's significant, but that's quite common, so we look at the fit indices instead. CFI 0.976, that's above the common cutoff value of 0.95, so that's okay. RMSEA 0 0.058, it's below the common cutoff value of 0.06, so that's good as well. And the p-value for the RMSEA is not significant, that's good too. And the SRMR is quite okay as well with 0.045. So we have acceptable model fit here. So now we can interpret the results. First a short look at the variances, only positive variances, so no Hayward cases. The covariances of course are all zero because we constrained them to be zero because we wanted to have uncorrelated factors in our model. Here are the estimates for the latent variables. We have three positive loadings that are significant for the subfactor textual. We have three positive loadings significant for the subfactor speed. For the general factor, eight of those nine subtests have positive significant loadings, but one subtest, X7, has only a very small standardized loading and it's not significant. X7 was speeded addition, and from what I remember from my school days, that is highly trainable. So you don't necessarily have to be intelligent to be fast at addition. So it makes sense from a theoretical standpoint that this subtest is only related to the group factor speed, but not the, to the general factor. So as a last change to the model, we delete the loading on the general factor. It's the same model, just without X7 in the measurement model for the general factor. And it normally, that's okay. CFI is still okay. RMSEA is still okay. SRMR is still okay. 
no negative variances, so we can interpret the results. All the factor loadings remaining in the model are significant and positive. If we want to know how much variance the group factors explain for each subtest and how much variance the general factor explains, we can square the loadings with the example of X4. The factor textual explains 55.5% of this subtest. The general factor explains 15.5% of this subtest. We add those two things up. We get to 71%. Where is the rest? It's down here. We have 29% residual variance or error variance. So in this case we see x1 to x3 are only related to the general factor. x4 to x6 are much more strongly related to the group factor textual than to the general factor. And for speed x7 is only related to the group factor speed. x8 is much stronger related to the speed factor than to the general factor. Only x9 is almost equally related to the speed factor and to the general factor. So that's it for Bifactor CFA with Levan. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button below the video. Thank you so much for watching.